Hey garden nerds, I'm Christy Wilhelmy, and for the last video of 2021, I thought I'd take you on a tour of Garden Nerd headquarters. There's a lot growing on here, and I want to give you a behind the scenes look. Let's start with this guy right here. This is that thousand head kale that I mentioned in an earlier video all about kale. This guy has outgrown this uh, tomato cage pretty much. I've got netting around it to keep it from being eaten by the rats, but it's here in this 16 inch pot and it's doing really well. And you can see my hand, these are as big as my hand. They're not quite as big as they're supposed to get. I think because they're growing in a container that I haven't really fed, because let's admit it, I'm tired. Anyway, let's move on to the potato patch. This is our only in-ground bed. I double dug it a while ago and it's been pretty productive every year. This year, for the first time, I'm growing potatoes. I've got three different varieties and I've got space for a fourth where I'm gonna be growing these fingerling potatoes that are sprouting and almost ready to plant. What I've got here are Yukon Gold, uh, a wiser farm red potato and all blue they all harvest at different times so it's great to you know have them coming in from the garden at different times of the year and then on this trellis I have two different types of peas uh, these are uh, snow peas so that's why they're very short and growing slowly and these guys are a trial no what is this uh, this is a blue shelling or snow pea so this is from MI Gardener we're giving them a try now, on to the brassica bed. Behind me is one of two brassicaceae beds that we have here at Garden Nerd Headquarters. This one is all broccoli and romanesco. So there's romanesco along this row, Thompson, uh, Calabrese, and then my favorite, which is Rosalind broccoli. It's a purple-headed broccoli that's so gorgeous. And I haven't been able to find seeds for it in a while, so I think I'm, I'm gonna have to try and save seeds, which is really hard to do without isolation distances, but heck, we'll see if we can give it a try. We have kept this bed completely covered with floating row cover the entire season so far because the rat problem has not receded despite our efforts to set rat traps. But uh, things are growing pretty well. You can see some of the leaves are a little bit crinkled. Uh, that's because of the floating row cover. But most of them are heading towards heading, if you can believe that. So it's time to fertilize these guys right before they start doing that. All right, let's move on to the root veggies. There's a lot happening in the root veggie bed, uh, including a whole bunch of daikon. There's winter radishes across the middle, the mid back row here. So that's uh, daikon, bora king, and watermelon radishes, and then uh, black Spanish radishes right here, plus a row of carrots that are black nebula, yellowstone, scarlet nance, and cosmic purple. Um, there's a lot of cilantro growing in the front and some parsley uh, right over there. And then in the very, very back, which you can see here, <laughs> there's some parsnips peeking out. So that's an entire row of parsnips. And these will all grow through the winter and we will harvest them in late winter, early spring. Over here in the lettuce patch, this is the salad garden. And I have some of my favorite purple mustards. This is a giant purple mustard. This is sawtooth mustard. And I did sow tatsoi three times and it got nibbled down to nibbins every single time and some wild arugula that just doesn't want to germinate. In front of that is uh, eight different varieties, nine, 10, 10 different varieties of lettuce and three different varieties of mosh, always good. And then some celeriac in the back here. Uh, we usually harvest out of this bed every day or every few days, and we have salads all winter long and into spring, and then we replant. Next, we've got our asparagus and green onion bed, which are interplanted, and the, the asparagus is done for the season. It's just starting to turn brown, and we will cut that down in early spring. We like to leave our foliage over winter for the habitat because the ladybugs love to mate in our asparagus patch. And the green onions, we just pick the tops and keep uh, it keeps growing. Next is our kale patch, which you've seen in a whole, we did a whole video just on this kale patch. And you can see some of the leaves are bent because we do cover it with floating row cover again for the rats, but they're going gangbusters, all those different varieties. 
You'll notice that floating row cover is kind of a theme in the garden this year. Uh, these are two tree posts that have uh, baby cuttings that we're propagating from the tree kale that lives in this bed. The rats have decimated most every single cutting I've tried to root and so we decided to wrap and pin down the floating row cover around here and the Cuttings are actually thriving inside here. So I've tied it up to here so they have a little ways they can grow before we need to pretty much expose them to the elements. But uh, so far, so good. That is working. And for those of you who have seen my other video on saving a pot-bound tree, this tree's gonna look pretty familiar. This is that Fuji apple tree. And after several years of having been in the ground, it produced like gangbusters this year. It had over 40 apples on it, but unfortunately the rats ate all but four. So there's these two left <laughs> and these two. And those earlier apples were so big too. I mean, they were like that big around and they were gone in a day, like all in one day. It was really disheartening. Uh, but anyway, we sally forth. <laughs> uh, this one is covered. It's got some uh, a maggot barrier on it. So that helps protect from the rats a little bit. It helps deter them a little bit. But you've heard me say it before. The rats have been really bad this year. Let's hope for a better 2022, shall we? All right, that's it for this week. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications to find out when our next video comes online. You'll find lots of information about like how to plant a really good fruit tree in my book, Grow Your Own Mini Fruit Garden, and all of your vegetable gardening questions can be answered in my book, Gardening for Geeks. Oh, and my novel, Garden Variety, is available for pre-order right now, so please go check it out and happy gardening.